Using a timeline like this, which is over a much shorter period of time, this is a timeline for just during World War II, really helps the children to focus on um, a shorter event. This is one to do with rationing. We've made it a very visual timeline because it helps them to understand, you know, when did items become rationed, when did the rationing stop. It's really good for those children who struggle with being able to um, draw timelines and fit things on. It's a, it's a much easier one for everybody to be able to access. And it looks very attractive at the end of it, and they get a lot um, out of being able to interpret it. I get them to think about where they are now and what age they are now, and then I ask them to think about when they were born, what year they were born. I get them to think about what they first did, about crawling, walking, going to play school, starting here, and then we look at where they are now at year three. And then from drawing those pictures to put them into sequential order, so they have an idea of what sequencing is about. Timelines really help me um, learn about history. Um, this particular timeline helps me learn about when different objects were rationed during World War II. For children to be able to understand change can be quite difficult. They think that some things have, have always been around. Um, in World War II, we've been looking at gas masks. So they know what gas masks looked like and the purpose of them during the Second World War. And then we looked at how those had changed. They're still used today, and they can clearly see that. But by having the props there, they can see how um, technology has progressed and how things have changed. I think it's useful to have props because you can see the changes, like these gas masks. And you can see how hard it would have been to wear these because this is quite uncomfortable fabric. Start off with the, a photo of them now, working back to maybe a year ago, then to when they were a toddler and a baby, and looking at how they have changed during the time and how their toys and things have changed during that time. Then once they've got the idea of how they have changed, it's a good idea to add in how their parents were young and how their grandparents were young. You can then start giving them objects and things to start putting in. A simple one is toys to use, um, but even household items such as pegs. For example, there's a very modern peg. We've got an older one and then a Victorian-style peg, and they can start putting objects along their timeline to show the progression of the time changing. A really good strategy for getting children to understand events and the consequences of those events is to look at maps. So we might look at a map of um, Europe at the start of the Second World War and then how it changed over time. We might start looking at the maps at the end of the First World War to have an understanding of why Germany wanted to go to war again. So maps are a very useful tool for being able to understand things like that. I put question and answer boxes in the classroom. These are not questions that I've asked, these are the questions that the children want to find out. So at the start of any topic, um, we will write down all the questions that they want to find out the answers to and we put them in the question box. And then it's up to them to find out the answers for each other. So they'll go away and do research at home, um, they might find out in the classroom, and they put the answers in the answer box. And then periodically we take them out and we share them with the class. One of the questions we put in the question box is, how many people were evacuated? I've researched and found out that over two million people were evacuated. It's not what I want them to find out, it's what they want to find out.